Hi, and welcome to the CAN Podcast. I'm the host, Warwick Slow, and today's guest is Gus Evans from Spring Loans. Gus has a different niche to your average mortgage advisor. He focuses a lot on business lending as well as business acquisition lending. On this podcast, we discuss why he's gone down that route, what he's learned since he launched his business in 2020, and his aspirations for winning more industry awards. It's a great chat. Gus is very open, honest, and direct. And if you'd like to listen to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can find us there at Can Podcasts. Otherwise, enjoy. Gus Evans, thanks for joining us here today. No worries, mate. Pleasure. I've, um, I've known you for a wee while. It goes back to 2020. All the way back. This Would have been a few... Cold calls in between as well. That's right. Now, um, your career, you, you've been at BNZ, ASB, and then you were doing BDM work at Kiwi Bank before yeah. you started out and went on your own. And your approach is a little bit different to other mortgage advisors. Yes, you do residential lending, but you also do a lot of business acquisition, business financing. What is it that motivated you to get into that space? <clears throat> so so when I was at BNZ, I built my – I was a business partner, so looking after business and commercial clients – I built my business off the back of working with advisors, and some of those advisors are good friends of mine. Um, but one thing I noticed was there wasn't many people doing it well. Uh, there was plenty of people trying to do it. But I guess the thing the thing about business funding and particularly acquisition funding is it's kind of like a, a muscle that you have to keep working. Um, plenty of advisors have like a commercial background, business background. They go into the advising space, but then they focus – on the quick and easier stuff, which is home lending, refinances, first home buyers. And um, you get paid more money on that, honestly, than you do on commercial stuff. But because of that, because you're not constantly doing it, you're not in constant communication with the commercial lenders, the understanding the nuances and the changes and all of that, it just goes away after a while. Not that they don't have the capability, but I think it more comes down to they haven't done it enough recently and they get rusty at it. Um, and because of that, I was seeing a lot of people get poor service, not, not necessarily because people don't have the best intentions, but they just hadn't practiced in a while. Um, it's like we're in the Olympics, right? You can't, you couldn't be a diver and done it heaps 10 years ago, then just jumped off a few springboards at the local pools and then hit, hit back into the Olympics, you know, like that's not realistic. Um, so yeah, one thing was I just saw a big gap where people specifically focus on it. Yes, we do some home lending, uh, but it's not a focus of ours. Our focus is to work with business owners. So we would say that we're mortgage brokers for business owners, even though brokers is a naughty word now for some reason. Yeah, yep. But we, we want to work with business owners because like we're business owners and that's who we work, in, work with day in and day out. So we kind of speak the same language. Um, they have a, you have a different kind of conversation with them, which I quite enjoy. Um, yeah, but what, one of the other reasons I started the business is having worked at initially ASB, and when I was there, they taught us that we were the best at commercial banking. And then I, I moved to BNZ, and I quickly found out that everyone says they're the best at something. They just measure it slightly differently. <laughs> and stuff that I couldn't get done at ASB, I was doing at BNZ. And then I went to Kiwi Bank. There was another set of rules to play by. I was like, well, clients – in New Zealand, don't typically use financial advisors for their business funding. I think it's like 40% of business transactions in Australia happen through a broker. Whereas in New Zealand, there's a guy doing a piece of work a few years ago and it was less than 2% of business transactions at that time. I don't know what it is now. I'd like mm. to hope it's a bit higher. But what happens in a business space is you just punch up to your bank. They've got your mortgage. You think they're going to be loyal to you. Good luck. But you go to that bank and it's, it's a computer says no for them. But at two of the other five, it might have been a deal all day long. But people get really despondent with that. It's not like a – can't go get a pre-approval to buy a business. There's so many variables. So I was like, well, I've worked at three of these five. At least I know what is acceptable at different places. So people might be at ASB and it's a great deal, but ASB says no or makes life way too hard. And we go to Westpac or BNZ or ANZ and they love that business. They love the industry. They want to grow. They're in a growth mindset. So just trying to work across all of them and we keep in touch with them you know, pretty consistently between the three of us that we've got in the business. So 
got some good relationships. And off the back of that, we've been able to help people into businesses that had given up before they came to see us. Like they thought they didn't have a chance anymore. Fantastic. Some great outcomes there. And it, you're right, it is quite a niche topic mm. or niche uh, uh, part, like part of your business. One, sorry, Indra, one oh, I'd right. really like to see the FMA take a different view on. Okay. So if you were at wanted to be a mortgage broker advisor tomorrow. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Working on that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if you wanted to be a mortgage advisor, you'd go do your level five and you do your residential lending strand. Within that, you get, I don't even know if you see a PL. They literally just tell you look at net profit, add back interest appreciation home office. And you go, okay, that's all very well and good. But it doesn't give you any understanding of how a business operates. Like we will commonly see people that have been to other advisors that their lending structure is completely wrong. So um, I don't know where I started with this. Oh, so I, I had, I mean, I actually, we're in a, joint, a presentation with the FMA and I, petitioned to them to say, actually, we need to look at this as a separate advice strand. Because I think it's pretty out the gate already that an 18-year-old could get a license. You know, they might have only ever bought a pack of lollies at the local dairy, but they can technically give someone advice on how to buy a house when they've got no idea about it. Versus we're letting, we could let that same 18-year-old bail up to a large corporate and act on their behalf for their commercial finances and how do they know what they're doing yeah well i mean that's even part of the, right? the industry's got to a point where you can't just go to a mortgage accelerator at westpac where they <laughs> tell you how to how that a commercial property loan should be over 15 not 30 and tick a box there because that's what the fma said i was like well no you've got no accounting no finance background or you haven't worked in commercial and business banking why are you allowed to provide advice on commercial and business products. And what was the feedback from the FMA? Well, they were just like, oh, you can, but the banks should provide these, these sessions to upskill you. And I was like, a session to upskill, how much can you really understand in that time period? Like, they don't talk about what a balance sheet is. Like, you'll see advice, like, I hear horror stories from commercial managers, people trying to buy a business and advisors putting the loan over 30 years where there's no security. So you've, it's just wasted people's time. And actually what happens is people talk to their advisor, they go, yeah, it should be sweet, not knowing. They'll spend money on due diligence, on forecasting with their accountant. Then they come back and they'll come see me. And I'm like, mate, you had no chance of buying this ever. So you've actually wasted money because you got poor advice. But I think partially that's on the FMA. Like people have a, we'll give it a crack attitude here. But how can you uh, how can you knowingly allow people to give advice on something that they don't know anything about? Oh, that's I mean, that's also like maybe one of the challenges of the legislation, like def drawing the line between wholesale retail clients, and I don't think that's been really well defined. No. And because of that, <laughs> I'm sure it's one of the important things down the line, but it's not the mm. first cab off the rank. Well, we tend to copy Australia, I think, broadly, like, but. Australia has a much more stringent view on the way they deal with their, their business and commercial brokers. Like you have to, we had a, one of our top brokers has come from Aussie, accredited over there. He is flabbergasted at how simple it is to become a broker here. Oh, it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The, I almost feel like we're, we're a big gatekeeper at a time because you've got to do your level fives, but then you need a strong business plan, mentorship plan, that type of thing when someone's getting set up. Mm. And if they don't have the appropriate experience, they've got to, you know, really got to work underneath somebody for a while. Yeah. Do you, um, as part of your services, do you sometimes help advisors who don't have expertise in commercial lending? Have you had any reach out and? I'll help mates out. Um, I guess I, in some respects we we're experts and we know it, so we want to s somewhat protect our brand. I would like the industry to get better. But at the same time, like time is money for us, right? So if you refer me a client and you want me to look after it, that's cool. But from my view, it's my client. Like we can talk about a commission share. I don't even really like doing that because um, in terms of a commission, you get paid a lot less on commercial debt. So you get paid in between 55 and 85 points on a home loan. You're getting paid 50 points on a commercial loan. And like some of our memos might be, 20 pages yeah. on a complicated deal. Whereas 
what are you talking like? They teach you to do two paragraphs, right? When you go through your mortgage advisor training. So it's not comparable in terms of hourly rate versus commission come through. So I would probably like you have to charge a client a fee, honestly, if that's yeah. the case. But often if someone's tried and mucked it up, mm. we have to charge a fee anyway, because that's made our job a lot harder. Fair enough. So I typically don't like doing because no one likes to pay a fee if I can get away without it. But if I have to undo it someone else's work, it's you know, doubles, triples my amount of time. Fair enough. As long as you're up front, it's well disclosed, yeah. then happy days. Yeah. But I mean, it's a small industry. So I'll have I love mates that were working in the bank in commercial and business banking, spend a while between drinks, and they can't quite understand how to do something. They'll call me up. I'll say, go do it X, Y, Z way. And then mm. if you have any problems, give me a call. But I'm not a, so they're not opening up the door for everyone to call me up to ask for advice on how to do complicated stuff. Unless they buy you a beer. Oh. Coke Zero. <laughs> Just a Coke. Yeah, that's the price. Um, and split it halfway, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'll have half the Coke Zero. You have half the Coke Zero, but I'll take 100% of the client. <laughs> so um, it's like you said, 2% of deals are going through a, yeah. a you know, broker with inverted commas. And like even just doing a little Google, if you search business acquisition broker NZ, you know, you come up straight away. <laughs> is that because what you're offering is so niche or have you spent time focusing on the SEO to get? I don't think I've spent a dollar on SEO. I've had a few, we get maybe once a month or sometimes once a day, we get like these cold emails being like, you know, we'll help improve your Google ranking. Like what, against the bank who's spending millions of dollars on the Google ranking? Our viewers, like we'd rather be known amongst the professionals that operate in the space. So accountants, solicitors, brokers selling the businesses. Um, we want to be known as expert in that space because that's where we pitch ourselves. Um, and there are a lot, there are people that that do what we do, and they have some competency. They're, they're like not idiots. I'm not saying that in any way. Or not saying that they can't do it. But the longer you don't focus on it, the harder it becomes when you when you're looking at something complicated. Yep. It's like mm. me trying to play table tennis. You know, yep. brother and I used to play growing up, but he's got one in his flat and always whips me now. So you got to keep flexing that muscle. How old is he still living in a flat? Ah, oh, he's six years younger than me. He's 27. Fair enough. Yeah, he's doing all right. Yeah. Um, now you won commercial mortgage advisor of the year last year or mm. this year, sorry, the NTMAs. Yeah. I mean, the more you say it, how niche is that? How many people are we up against in that? Well, there's a bit of controversy in there, I reckon. <laughs> the year before Sacha uh, won it and he's, uh, he's a great broker. Um, and I don't know how they necessarily calculated commercial debt. I think they, they adjusted the parameters of it. Um, because they they bought in specialist lender. I, I I don't know Sachin's business well enough. Um, I know he's a weapon. But <clears throat> who was I up against? I was up realistically against two other people, but I was pretty disappointed that Ash, my business partner, wasn't nominated as well because I know for a fact that he'd done more commercial debt than than the other two. Um, I think they probably didn't want to have two people from the same business in the running. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I don't know how. Next I don't year, know how it works. Do a nomination for him? No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I want to win. No, nah, he's um, he's like one of my best mates, but he he should have been in the running. If I'm being honest with you, yeah, he he was. He had done more in his second year than I had done in my second year, and like I knew who I was up against, so I asked some of the commercial BDMs at the banks how I was fearing up on applications in and I knew that I was ahead but it's it's not purely numbers driven it's subjective like I was talking to some of the judges and they said that yeah it's like a different criteria it's yeah. not just numbers yeah so I was like I could still not win even though I knew that I had done more volume than those guys in commercial space um, but I know for a fact Ash should have been in there so but I mean what are we going to do complain that he didn't get nominated like I think, yeah, you got to put together a better, more compelling um, case for him. We shouldn't have used ChatGPT. <laughs> there you go. We should have bought the premium version. That's right. Use it right from the heart. Yeah, mate. I reckon 95% of submissions were written by some level of AI. You'd hope not. You'd hope you, not. You can tell straight away when you read something online. You just written. write, make it more casual. Even then, it's just still <laughs> terrible. Oh, like I've, when people will describe themselves as a, as a titan of the industry. Yeah, <laughs> want to delve into it. <laughs> Yeah, there's actually like there's there's a lot of words which since the since ChatGPT's come out, the increase of those words on online articles is like yeah. skyrocketed. Yeah, and um, 
there was a guy at our football club last year and you could tell he was quite nervous and he and you go through all the social teams, everyone's reading like a bit of a speech about the season. Yeah. And this guy just had the most verbose, elongated speech where he's just reading into his phone. Did you just write this comment on chat GPT? Verbose? I'm actually I'm AI. Yeah. Yeah. What you're seeing. Got a little right Elon here. Musk panel in the back That's of your right. head. That's right, yeah. Plugged in. But this poor guy. Just yeah. shocker. But you can tell now and you can tell pretty easily something's written by AI. Mm. It's got that I don't know, it just doesn't sound nice off the tongue. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think using it in conjunction with your original <clears throat> work is the way forward. Mm. But, yeah, it's still buyer beware. And um, so what's next on your on your radar? Are you, are you going for the, the top prize next year again? Uh, I think because of the way our business is built, that's not realistic for us. Like there is like mortgage advisors out there that have got like four people teams underneath them. Um, they've got like three or four credit writers, people looking after clients, and they've just got way more scope to grow. Um, like I, I know that we, when, we, when you're niche, you're operating in a niche market and your scope for growth is more limited than if you're broad. But my view like at the start was this is a couple of thousand brokers in New Zealand, I guess. I mean, I'd, you probably know the number. Um, I'd rather only compete with a few of them than compete with all of them. So... I mean, I technically got an excellence award for broker of the year because I won commercial. Um, do I think that's realistic? Honestly, probably not just because of the way that I've run my business. I only, I've only just got help two months ago. So I've been running pretty hard. Wanted to figure out how much I could write without help and I, fig I figured it out because I was like not sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife like took the brunt of it last kind of 12 months in terms of me working late every night. So um, going for the top prize isn't my focus. I'd like to win commercial again, but who knows? Like Ash is having a pretty good year, so he might put me at the post. Don't Hopefully. know. Hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully he gets second. Now, you've been – the business has been going – it's in its fourth year now. Yeah. How, in terms of when you first set out, how have your goals shifted from when you have initially started the business to now? Are there things that have changed and with, with those lessons you've maybe... Man, I had no idea what I was doing when I started out. I was <laughs> like, we're going to be an aggregator. We're going to have all these advisors. This is going to how this will be how it's going to work. But like I pretty quickly realized that actually the market is really small um, and the marketplace is really uneducated around the value that we provide. Um, <clears throat> so growing it big... I don't know how realistic that was at the start. Like, um, if you, if you ever heard the saying, I'd rather have a hole than an a-hole. <laughs> like I will, like we, we're always on the lookout for great people to join the team, but really, really picky. So for four years in, we've got three people. We're talking to a couple others to come join us. I think we'll be, I guess what you'd say mid size, like eventually we'll get to like 10. Yeah, um, you might. But I just, but would, I'd rather have 10 people doing a really good job, earning really good money and building a really good brand for us. Um, then just getting people, like seats. telling people to come out of a bank where like, let's be honest, you earn a, you earn a lot of money at a bank these days. Like it's gold, ultimate golden handcuffs. Everyone gets paid like 120 to 160 and they get four weeks holiday a year. They get no upside, but it's a pretty comfortable salary to get paid. Um, so yeah, I thought we were going to be a very different to what we are now we started. Now, like I, I see our future as really specialist, so lean more into business. Um, love to educate the marketplace a little bit. Like there's Accountants have hundreds if not thousands of clients, and I think probably 40% of their book is overpaying for their debt significantly. Like I just, just picked up a client and saved them 1% across the board. On their debt it's huge straight away and mm -hmm. like and fundamentally they thought they were getting an okay deal from their commercial bank but they were getting a horrible deal but you know the bit of stockholm syndrome had snuck in you know they're comfortable life was easy but at some stage it's not worth paying more than you need to the uh the growth goals is something that i encounter a lot of the time when people join the industry or are getting started up and i think like you said it's a very small industry <clears throat> and 
having four advisors actually puts you in the top 50% in terms yeah. of size because I think it's 50% of uh, advice businesses have one to three advisors on their oh, license. We've, we've only got three at the moment, so. So, yeah, but you see like that's, mm. you know, if you've got, I remember seeing the stat, it was like if you've got 10 advisors on your FAP, you're in the top 4%. When's that, this coming out? This um, this episode? Yeah. Good After question. the 26th of this month? Uh, yeah, for sure. Sweet. So, of the, sure. so Ash and I both made the top advisors list this year. Okay. So in terms of... I guess like what we're looking for and Brad does insurance and lending, but if he, if he doesn't win some award for his insurance advice, something's wrong because he's a weapon. But well, I guess that- the Can Awards, mate. The Can Awards. Do you have a Can Insurance Award? We do. They're coming out in February though, at the conference. Coming out at February in the conference. Yeah. Well, I'll just get your engraving pen out now. Bradley, Robert Tonkin. <laughs> <laughs> you have to write up a very worst, compelling Worst case. hairline. Worst hairline. Nah. Oh, God. No, he yeah. wanted me to tell you that he went to CrossFit today. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Um, we'll, we'll take it into consideration. Yeah. So, like, we are really selective at who we bring on. Like, um, like, they have to fit our culture, which is, like, you have to, like, we want young people who are hungry to grow that um, are good buggers that, that enjoy hanging out with each other. And, when I when I worked with Ash, initially, he hates me telling the story. He was my analyst at ASB. Oh, we had some huge arguments, like not mates at all. <laughs> <laughs> but when he wasn't working for me, we were working together. We're like like really good friends. He would bring out the best of each other. Love a bit of competition. We went to school with Brad, like, and he just applied for a job online one day with us, and we put it up. And he's exactly the same as us. Like, it's a really good fit. So, um, but everyone's really competitive, really wants to do well for their clients and themselves. So I think like success breeds success. So yeah, we had two of three on that list and Brad will have to win some award of, in terms of how well he's done in his first 12 months. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, like we small, but powerful, you know, what were the arguments about with Ash? What were the arguments about? Um, I was like, I was like the, I was the analyst. So I was writing the deals and he was the assistant. And he wanted to be an analyst, but he didn't want to do any of the assistant work or any of the crap analyst work. And I was like, I'll train you, but you have to take some stuff off my plate. I'm not letting <laughs> you do the fun stuff straight away. And he just refused. And I um, told him to do his job quite loudly in the office. <laughs> do you still have to do that? Tell him to do his job? No, nah, he's pretty good these days. Okay, good. Good. He's a grinder, Ash. Yep. What does that make you? What does that make me? Inwardly, Ash's boss. Outwardly, I don't know. Part of the team, mate. <laughs> the no, axe no, on no. the grinder. No, no, he's a <clears throat> honestly work. I I think I've lucked into building an awesome team. Fantastic. And um yeah, and like they were first of all, like both Ash and Brad were just brokers and then they became business partners because I was like, when you find someone great, you wanna ha- you wanna keep them around. And um like I've become a lot better because of the guys around me. I challenge each other. Ash has different ways of looking at things, Brad has different ways of looking at things. So I think I don't understand how people do this by themselves because she's it can be a pretty lonely game. Absolutely. Yeah. When you when you found those, you know, great candidates, great fits for the business, you know, how long was it until you said, Do you guys want to Ash had an option. Like Ash had to meet some milestone because I knew him. We worked together at Kiwi Bank for I think I was there for six months um before I started spring. So I Ash when Ash started the business, he had an option to buy in. So that was pretty early and um, like we just pumped him because like, I wanted him to be in. So I, like I, the way that his, his option worked was, um, it was based on a specific, a specific stream of revenue, which he, that was his specialty. Uh, so like I just, found, I just found clients in that space as well. Cause like, even if I earned the money, it was counting towards his option. So Ash was basically had done his, he had two years to meet the target he'd done in eight months. So he's a he's a machine. Well done. Day one, when Brad joined the business, he I don't know if he remembers this, but he asked, like, what does my future look like at this company? Like if I am successful, I was like, man, I like like the cut of this guy's jib. He was a year older than me at school, so he kind of thought he had the power move to play, I reckon. <laughs> but I said, look, mate, like we want good people. So if you are good and you want to hang around and you do a good job, then absolutely. So I think Brad would have been there a year before he bought him. 
um, yeah, what an addition. Because that's the hardest part. A lot of businesses face that. You're a good advisor. You know, maybe you've got to weigh up, are you a good business owner? And then you finally find someone good. And then after that two-year mark, so often people are going, oh, I want to do my own thing. Well, like I think, so this industry is, like, it's the barriers entry are unbelievably low. And the commissions, like, you can go with some, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. Don't I don't even names. know what we're playing. I don't even yeah. know what we're paying with you. Yeah, but it's worth it. Yeah, good. Way worth it. <laughs> I don't even. But you can pay like let's put the we'll call it eight, we'll call eight fifty plus just a month, mm. just to throw a number out, mm. and you can get a hundred percent of your commissions. So why, why am I trying to hold on to someone, like, if, and like desperately trying to hold on to them when they can go out and if they've got a good network, just get their own referrals. Mm. I'd rather have them as part of a team. Like they get part of the business ownership, I guess. But what's it worth? Like the way we operate our business is like it's only three of us are shareholders. So we take the lion's share out. Like, we're, And then we leave money in to do cool things, buy cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't. What are some I cool guess, things you're going to buy? Um, we still bought ourselves Christmas presents last year. <laughs> I don't know. I reckon. Are they secret? No, nah, no, nah, I sold mine after. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a jet ski? No, nah, it wasn't a jet ski. We just bought some expensive headphones and afterwards. I was like, I didn't even like them. Don't know why I did it. Um just got excited around Christmas time, you know? <laughs> a bit of a Black Friday uh, deal or we'll something. Might sneak in a trip like a like a, a business trip to Lincoln with a conference in Fiji or something. Like um that's the sort of stuff that we want to do. Like it's no point mm. working what's the point of working so hard and earning good money, like because that's a that's the byproduct of working hard and providing good advice. If you don't have any fun along the way, and I think that's what people can get bogged down with is just like money, 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 money. But at the end of the day, like you got you die and it's gone, so you might as well enjoy the ride as well. Not in like an unwise way, but yeah, well, um, we'll probably go to go to penciled and trip to Aussie next year the um, directors and we'll go to a little conference over there but maybe Fiji the year after just if, if the things still prop well but yeah you got to have fun right That's I reckon right. Like, who wants to turn up the, to work and hate it I mean like if you're at the bank you already do that yeah and if it's conference you know deductible exactly I'm told business expense exactly speak to your accountant you'd be surprised what is a business yeah. expense that's right so um, always speak to your accountant for any accounting advice oh, of course I'm not making fun but um yeah, it sounds like you've built a good little network. If the right person comes along, you'll grow, and then it's got to make sure yeah. you enjoy the ride. Got a few people that we're chatting to, like um, but again, like we've approached them because we think that'd be great. Uh, versus like we don't we don't advertise online trying to get new advisors in. I've got plenty of mates that are in the industry or joined or are thinking about joining us, and I was like, I just was honest. I was like, look, I would work. I not that I don't like you and don't want to work with you. Like it's not going to be a fit for us in terms of what you're wanting to do and versus what we want to do. So I've suggested they talk to some other mortgage advice companies because I think they're a better fit. Um, but yeah, like we definitely want to grow, but I'd rather grow slow and grow well with with the right people. You're working at the bank? Yeah. How long were you thinking about going and starting your own business before you did it? So I, um, I basically had this idea. So when we when we started the business, I I had very very specific way that I wanted to run it, who I wanted to work with, how I wanted it to operate. I had that idea and pitched it to a mate of mine eight years ago, seven eight years ago. Didn't want to do it, so I took another job, um, stayed with my corporate hand uh, shackles for a few years. So I've been thinking about it off and on, right? Like you said. You sit working at a bank, um, sell destroying. You get paid good money by a mortgage, and you know lots of kids. Probably had two kids at the time. I initially thought about it, and um, I don't know if my wife would have let me when I first had the idea because timing wasn't right. But it was definitely something I was thinking about for a long time. Like I just, I just saw that there was an opportunity there. Um, the other people have been kind of servicing, so it made it four or five years thinking about it before I started, but not like necessarily writing down business plans, but just like ruminating over it. How would I do it? Where's the opportunity? How do you grow it? Um, you know, make plenty of 
ill-informed thoughts along the way <laughs> that I've uh, had corrected for me or corrected myself, but it's definitely something I've thought about for a long time. And for your client base, do you find that you maybe intentionally or not, do you find you sit in a particular niche for those business acquisitions? Maybe you dealt with a couple of people in one industry and they've referred you on or is it quite broad? So I'd say the way that our business operates is like I would typically tend to do the larger acquisitions and that doesn't mean that Ash in particular isn't capable of it because Ash is like a really good advisor. Um, but it's just it's just the way things have uh, have struck. So Ash would do the odd big deal, but most of my transactions would be larger business purchases. Um, so I don't I haven't gone down a niche with that. Um, when you look at larger transactions, you get less of other you get less of industries just by nature. Like how many large hospitality businesses are there, right? Like you've got Hip Group, maybe a couple others that are pretty decent sized, but. Um, there's not an industry that I've gone down. I love service-based businesses, um, big intangibles, which is like a couple of banks hate. So I, if, if I was like looking for an ideal business, it's service-based, it's providing a service to another business that they need because people are lazy. They don't want to service their coffee machine. They don't want to, you know, do the maintenance around the building. So I love like larger service businesses, um, especially because some banks hate them. So if they've gone to the wrong one, you can pretty quickly take them to the right one. It's, um, it's so funny how you've got that particular niche. Oh, it's, it sounds like there's not necessarily a niche that you've got, but it's like a preference. Would you ever go down the route of helping like do a mortgage acquisition for, or for a mortgage business? Mate, I'd love to buy a mortgage book. I just don't know where you find them. <laughs> it's hard, man. Matt, People like, ask me all the time. <clears throat> I've had two calls today. Yeah. Um, if you're looking to sell your business, it's going to be cool. Uh, no, I don't, would I help someone fund a mortgage acquisition? Funding those like specific businesses is really interesting. Like, so it's similar to insurance books, um, where you're basically just buying top line revenue. Um, but I've seen other people buy books and structure them really badly in mortgage advising. Um, so would I help someone buy it? hundred percent. Would I like to buy one? I oh, maybe I might backtrack. I don't like my clients are, are awesome. Like I, they're all successful. Like they're all very similar personalities to me. I think that's why I like them, and hopefully that they, they seem to like me um, because they're they're not they're not like a first home buyer. And there's nothing wrong with being a first home buyer, but the the advisors that do great with them are really empathetic. They love holding hands. Um, whereas my personality type is very direct. Like. I will sometimes offend people like without meaning to just because I'm just getting to the point because that's the way I like to receive information. So so I would I don't know if I'd buy a book because I don't know what the client base would look like. Like yeah. my cli- my clients are all are all very similar. But you might have a mortgage advisor come to you and say, Hey, I need to buy this. Need, need I'd fund it. Um <laughs> yeah, I'd fund it. Again, I I think they just bail up to the bank and give it a nudge, chuck it on the house. Like, and honestly, that's the cheapest way of funding sometimes if you're doing a small acquisition. But like if you're buying, if you're a service-based business like we are, like we're basically consultants, buying another consulting book, you bail up and the bank goes, show me the P&L. And if the mortgage book you're acquiring is, you know, paying rent, it's paying advice, you know, assistance that you're no longer going to take on, you've got to be really clear as to how you're going to buy that. So I'd help someone for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's finance companies out there that'll give you money, cheap and dirty money for that stuff. Is it the right? Probably not, unless you've got a pretty good idea to scale and you know how you're going to run it. It's um, yeah. I often wonder, like some people have the capital just lying around, and there must be a lot that just say <clears throat> it's a bloody good investment. You get a good return on it straight away. Yeah, I know some people have, have acquired books over time. Um. And I think it's a good it's a good business model if that's the way your business operates. And I think that the key to be successful in this industry is actually to know who you are and who your client is. Um, but I don't know the clients of someone else. So there is probably three people's books I would buy if they offer them to me. And they can probably like if they're I don't know if they even bother to listen to it, but they'll know who they are. <laughs> um, just because I know I know their type of client and I know the service that they provide is similar. 
and I know they know what they're doing. Call them um, up. Call them up. Yeah, it was really no. It was just interesting looking back and reflecting on the on the different um, the goals that you had. Yeah, when you initially started and now and how different it is. But I think the approach you've gone for is, you know, in my opinion, I think it's the way to structure it. I think mm. keep a really high performing niche team mm. seems to be like the most profitable, stress free. I say that with the inverted commas way of doing it. Yeah, I mean, um, and like we've we've been back with Can for a couple of days now, honestly, but. I was gutted when we left um, trail the first time because, like, the system is so good. Um, and this will go to your attestment to your uh, table tennis skills. No jokes. The, um, that. <laughs> your like, so I was with I was with trail as we started. An operational decision basically got made for me by a bank where I had to go with an aggregator. Um, didn't love it, honestly. And then you called me up. When would it have been? Two years ago, maybe. Um, you know, like you called me up like a, a lonely ex girlfriend and asked me to come back. <laughs> no, no, you uh, you called me up and you're like, "Hey, mate, baby, come back." Yeah, yeah. Mate, if I could sing, I'd yeah. drop it down, <laughs> play that song. Um, <clears throat> and I was like, I, I mean, I said to you, I was like, "Mate, if I could, I would." I remember saying to you, I, "Hey, good on you for having the stones to call because cold calling sucks." Oh yeah. Um, nah, I'd fun, love though. to come back. I can't. Told you what needed to happen, and um, I'm not going to take credit for that because I'm sure that other people had said a similar thing. But to your credit, you guys made it happen, and we're stoked to be back. I was on the phone to the boys before this and just said, "I'm off to see uh, Waza, as we call you behind closed doors. <laughs> that's Presume good. that's your nickname. You can call me that to yeah. my face. That's what other yeah. fans call me too. Yeah, um, Waza. Waza. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. Yeah. Um, it's like, I'm going to see Waza, what do we reckon? And the overwhelming, like, man, the system's so much better, so much more user-friendly, the interface is nicer. Like, I'm calling up mates that are with other aggregator, singular, not plural, and being like, mate, like, you guys have got to have a look at this. I'm sending them fact finds from a client perspective, just go, like, have a look at the interface because it's so much nicer, way easier to use, um, and it just feels like it's more malleable. Like mm. a built for New Zealand for advisors, and particularly I think for what we do, which is a little bit more niche, it's going to work better with that than what we had been using. So like we're excited to to use it going forward. Definitely appreciate that, mate. Um, do you want cash or check or how do you take payment for that type of uh, testimonial? <laughs> little handshake, little no. handshake, but put your hand in your pocket first and pull some money out. All oh, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, no, we're excited to be back. Um, yeah, no, so. stoked, man. No, I appreciate it. And yeah, it's such a, you know, it's funny like looking back, having been in this business now for what, four and a half years, and there's so many conversations have, we've had with people like yourselves mm. in the real early days. And it's great to see your your growth from just a, not pie in the sky, but you know, it's just like you're thinking about doing this yeah. to actually like bloody doing it and, mm. and doing it really well and winning awards and growing your team. It's, it's great to see. So yeah. I'm really happy for you. Yeah, we definitely set our sights on a few of those. Um, so I think last year I, I got excellence for commercial. Well, there's only two of us on it, so I came second to Sachin, unfortunately. But then I, I um young gun as well, and I figured I'm too old to be a young gun now. So Ash Ash, <laughs> Ash entered and, and got excellence award as well. But like we we set ourselves some goals that we have every six months. We sit down, keep each other accountable professionally, personally. Um, yeah, and like. Ash's goal is to beat me for commercial advisor next year. My goal is that he wouldn't. And I don't know what Brad's goal is to continue going across with it as far as I'm aware. <laughs> well, the, the, I like the competitive edge. It can be really motivating. Yeah, Matt, I love it. I love yeah. working as a team. As I said, uh, yeah, to work by yourself, I rec- it, it's not me. Like I love hanging out with people. Like COVID changed it a bit, you know, like I never thought I would set all these businesses for people like sizable businesses i never meet them until after settlement but um that's why having a good team environment is so important like i never work from home uh, in the evenings maybe i hate it mm. i work from a mate's office i work from a partner center i work from office around here i've got just a bunch of free places to work basically um okay. you can work here if you want yeah thanks mate it's about an hour and 45 minutes from my house so. yeah. <laughs> well the offer's open yeah. if you ever had a business out here that you if work I'm with ever, if I'm ever hanging out here 
I'll come so yeah I appreciate the journey then mate yeah yeah awesome Um, yeah that competitive side's so fun I remember I used to work with a guy and when somebody new would join would have you'd get a shot at the bin with this yeah. like little rolled up piece of rubbish and the bin was probably like, I don't know, five meters away and you had to lob it in, but you could only get a shot if somebody joined. <clears throat> yeah. And it got demoralizing because it came more at least about the sales yeah. side of things and more <laughs> about actually being good at shooting in the bin. Yeah. And yeah, my conversion rate was terrible. Mm. But um hopefully I, not with new advisors, just the bin. No, conversion, yeah, I think yeah, it's pretty yeah, pretty decent, but it's always a long game with this because it's such a niche industry and you've mm. only got X amount of businesses to work with. You don't really want to burn a burn a bridge, or you, know, you just yeah. want to keep it, yeah, pretty pretty positive yeah. most of the time. So I think if you put out the right energy, then mm. yeah. People... But if anyone's here's another sales pitch for you was okay, good, good. If anyone's thinking about joining, like it's you hear the horror stories about like commission holds and all sorts of stuff. Like a, and like we had a problem, like what well, wasn't a problem, a potential issue with our insurance, like quadrupling. And that you guys stepped in and like seamlessly made that process happen. I was in Queenstown pretending to watch my kids on the swing or something. And I called you up. I was like, man, I need some help here because I'm not real keen on paying X amount for our insurance. Like, and feels like I can probably get a better deal. And you're like, leave it with me. And I did. And you sorted it. So, oh, mate. Um, happy to get a good outcome there. Yeah, mate. Like, we're really appreciative. Of helping us out, I um, think that's by benefit of a smaller um, a business is actually just don't feel like another number, and mm. I think that's what we were. We were another number. We were definitely not one of the biggest. You know, like we are, you have advisory firms paying you way more than us, but we wouldn't. We don't feel like that being here. It's um yeah, it's something that you got to be genuine in the way you communicate and come across yeah. and problem solve people. But I always remember like one. Not to give ourselves a pat on the back too much. But yeah, one advisor was like, single advisor, called me up one day. And they're like, you know what? You guys always make me feel like I'm your biggest client Yeah, I'm just a single advisor. But you want everybody to have that feeling mm. and and feel like they're valued. And everybody is. Like We have like mm. great advisors who are with us who help us grow the product or bring other advisors on. It makes such a big difference and it makes yeah. it more fun. <laughs> What's my commission rate for a new advisor? Um, commission rate is a whopping, oh, I remember it's the same fee that I gave you for that testimony oh, before. So a um, hundred bucks. Yeah. hundred, hundred dollars, right. And yeah. the, uh, Zimbabwean of course, but, yeah. um, yeah, no, we'll put it right into that there back pocket of yours. But, um, no, thanks so much for coming out today. I think your journey has been an interesting one over the last four years. And I think if you look at where you've started and where you've come from and where you are now, it's, um, it's amazing to see that journey and looking forward to seeing the next steps with the team growth. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks Excited again. to be part of Can and trail and oh man i appreciate that forward. yeah it's funny we do this podcast don't always try and make it all about us but if you want to say that absolutely that's right i'll take it you're making it about me so it's only fair <laughs> but i uh, appreciate it gus awesome thank you